Yo, uh, hello, it's Editor Nugget here. If you can't tell, I'm kinda sick. <coughs> okay, so basically, uh, if you didn't know, I have a Discord server, and they helped me a whole lot with this video, giving me some cool ideas to test out, so if you want to be a part of future videos, then I suggest joining the server, or if you're just a big fan and you want to interact with other fans and stuff, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'd greatly appreciate it if you joined, because the server is mostly kinda dead. Enjoy the video! Smartphones. They're like a computer in your pocket, right? That's how they're advertised, at least. However, in reality, they can't really compare to a desktop. Smartphones lack the software support of a true desktop, and as a result, every simple task that you can do with a PC or laptop becomes 10 times harder. This especially applies to things like web browsing, where websites tend to look like... this. However, companies like Samsung and Huawei have tried to close that gap by having their phones turn into desktops the moment they're plugged into a display. While it isn't going to fix software support problems, it will make desktop tasks significantly easier. So, in today's video, I'm going to be spending a week with Samsung's desktop OS and giving you my thoughts. I didn't know how to segue to an intro, so here you go. Samsung DeX is a feature first implemented with the Samsung Galaxy S8 in 2017. When plugged into an external display, Samsung DeX will activate, giving your phone a desktop operating system. Originally, it required a proprietary Next dock and later an HDMI adapter, but since then, they have began supporting the use of generic USB-C adapters. Of which I used in this video, because I'm not spending this much fucking money on a dock. Samsung still does recommend using equipment that is optimized for DeX, but I haven't seen any unexpected problems so far. Another feature that was added later on was wireless and Windows DeX, allowing you to display the DeX interface on a smart TV or computer respectively. I personally have no use for either of these features, but it does make things like maybe posting to Instagram or showing pictures and videos to family and friends significantly easier. The design strongly reminds me of Chrome OS with a similar styled start menu and rounded taskbar. I wouldn't consider it to look very good, however, it had a few crappy design choices. The thing that looks worse about it is the window borders. Putting thick window borders in an operating system aiming to look modern is an awful idea. In terms of functionality, it's pretty similar to your average desktop OS. Navigation is the same, desktop icons are the same, multitasking is the same. For the most part, it's quite similar to the likes of Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. One thing I did find quite unique were these navigation buttons. Their functions are mostly the same as they are in base one UI. The back button functions as a back button, the home button minimizes all windows, and the task changer button opens recently closed. Recently closed is the only navigation button I really found useful since it allows you to reopen applications right where you left them. The other ones didn't really seem necessary in my opinion. I spent the first day just setting up the desktop, and it felt pretty normal. Everything felt pretty similar to any other operating system, but with a bit of an Android feel to it. After I finished setting up, I began testing social media as well, also looking for a Samsung DeX supported screen recorder. Sadly, Samsung's built-in screen recorder doesn't seem to work with DeX. I'm not sure why they haven't added support for it, but... Most apps on DeX basically run as if they're on a tablet, so they don't feel exactly optimized for desktop usage. The only apps I used in this video that were supported by DeX were Remote Desktop Connection and Google Chrome. Everything else pretty much felt like I was running Bluestacks. It wasn't as bad as you would think though, it was just slightly less convenient. I'm sure if you were actually running DeX on a tablet it would feel much better, but in my case I'm basically just using it like a laptop. One thing I did find quite awful though was the window management. It's clear they haven't really developed in this field. <laughs> Cue the 5 minute clip of me just trying to put two windows next to each other. Instead, I just resorted to the start plus arrow key command, which luckily works fine. 
Alright, so today I want to try running some games through Samsung DeX. I do already have a few. I know that Roblox just flat out does not work. I'm pretty sure 2048 might work fine. Oh my god, the ads. Oh, go away. I want to start the game. Bro, I can't start the game with the ad in the way. There we go. What? Okay, clearly 2048 does not actually work. I do know for a fact, however, that Solitaire works fine. There, I, I did it. I won Solitaire. The first game I want to try is Terraria, just out of curiosity, but I currently don't have the game, so I do have to buy it. I'm pretty sure I can just refund this afterwards, but I'm probably not going to because I can play Terraria on trips and stuff now, I guess. Oh, there's music. You guys can't hear it, though. Yo, okay. Oh, wait, the keyboard works too. See, look, if I press the escape key, it does the exit command thing. Eager Interior of the Law. What a great name. All right, let's play it. Yo? Yo, no way! The keyboard works. Oh, that's awesome! No way! Okay, I can switch between weapons. Oh, I'm actually amazed by this. This is awesome, bro. All right. I genuinely did not expect this to work. All right, there, there. I, I completed the house. It's, it's fine. Just ignore this spot here. Now, I'm also going to check if Fortnite works. Oh, wait, it's... <laughs> It's downloadable on the Galaxy Store. I could have just done that. Install. I, I think I get it now. So they want you to download the Epic app so you can install Fortnite. That makes more sense. Oh my god. I just want to play Fortnite! Can you imagine some kid who has an S21 or something like that, yet they don't actually have like a laptop or something they can play Fortnite on? So they instead just decide to use DeX because for some reason they have a monitor laying around and a USB-C adapter and a Bluetooth keyboard. I mean, at least you'd get Fortnite mobile lobbies, but you know. I'm also going to turn off my Bluetooth headphones so you guys can hear the glorious phone internal speaker. Starting Fortnite. Oh my god, we're going to play Fortnite, guys! Gotta get that competitive tilted keyboard. Bro, well that sucks, Fortnite doesn't work. I'm totally sad about that. It's totally not like I really, really didn't want this to work at all because I don't want to play Fortnite again. I do have a controller though, we'll see if that works. Oh yo, no way, ha, ah, yes. Actually no, cause that means I have to play Fortnite. Um, can I skip? B, I'm pressing B. B. I'm not interested! It's the cube! From season 5! How frightening! F***ing skip! Oh, I have to press and hold. <laughs> no! I don't care! What is this? Now what button do you want me to press? Alright, I give up. Okay, so it's clear that gaming isn't incredible on DeX, but I have one more option. I know streaming games from another computer is technically cheating here, but I at least wanted to see if it would work. First, I decided to try Steam Link, and it worked okay. There is definitely noticeable delay, so basically any game that requires good reflexes is out of the question still. It also technically doesn't have DeX support, so it is a little buggy and the cursor doesn't work correctly. However, Microsoft's remote desktop connection is shown in a list of DeX supported software on Samsung's website. So, does it actually work any better? I set up the desktop client off camera because it was an absolute pain in the ass, but let's see if it works. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is what happens when you compress three monitors onto one and you have multiple pictures on one of your monitors. But I mean, it is working. It's kind of artifacty and slow, but it's working. In a very specific situation, this could theoretically bypass a network block at your school, such as Discord for mine. But in my opinion, it's a bit tedious, so I'd probably rather not do it. Also, it runs like garbage and there's way too much artifacting. Oh yeah, and while I'm at it, here's my Discord server. Join my Discord server. I'm gonna assume that this is a really bad way to play games because it is running like absolute garbage. But we could just try Tmod Loader real quick. <laughs> I can hear my computer fans blasting up in the other room. Wow, I, I sure do love this loading symbol cursor and very low frame rate. This is not the definitive way to play Terraria. We the, the keyboard is not working. Can I shoot my water bolt? 
There we go. Amazing. Great gameplay. Let's defeat Eye of Cthulhu. Oh yeah, I can't open my inventory. <laughs> I'm gonna preface this by saying, this didn't go as well as I hoped. Not because of lackluster support, but because I didn't feel like spending more money on this video. The only video editing softwares that people recommended were paid softwares like KineMaster, PowerDirector, and Adobe Rush. Yes, I could have gone for a cracked APK, but... Eh. Instead, I just decided to try CapCut. Not for any particular reason, but it's the first one that came to mind. And surprisingly, it worked okay. It even looks like a proper editing software, and Samsung's added swiping gestures work for scrolling along the timeline. There's not a whole lot you can make with CapCut though, and I don't really think it's worth it to buy a mobile editing software when there's multiple free desktop options like DaVinci Resolve and Kanan Live. And as for photo editing, it just didn't work. <laughs> For some reason, Samsung's Files app doesn't let you move files from an external drive to your phone. Trust me, I tried. It wouldn't matter anyway, since Lightroom Mobile doesn't let you edit raw photos for some reason. In conclusion, this is a really cool feature, but it does need some work. As of now, it lacks the software support to be of any practical use. In fact, Dex did have more software support with the Linux on Dex feature, but then it was removed for some reason? I'm not sure what Samsung's hopes are for the future of this feature, but right now, coming back to my main machine feels like a breath of fresh air. In fact, while working on this video, I got myself a laptop, and even though this thing is half as powerful as my phone, I'd take this over the phone. The DeX feature has a lot of potential, but it seems like Samsung just doesn't care about it right now. So, do I plan on replacing my main computer with a Samsung DeX machine? No, but for the sake of the video, why not?